You're in charge of it. How high do you go? Um, I'd go to 20. Why not more? I don't know. <laughs> not 100? No, maybe not 100, but... Everybody could be making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. That'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> to many, raising the minimum wage seems like a no-brainer. It certainly did to the people we talked to in Silver Lake, a trendy hipster enclave in Los Angeles. If the poorest workers can simply make more money per hour, they'll be lifted out of poverty, right? So would you mind just, you know, choose putting an X next to the minimum wage that you'd like to see? Definitely not five dollars. Um, probably not a hundred dollars. Um, I don't know, I'm guessing fifteen kind of seems about right. Probably fifteen, sixteen dollars an hour, maybe even seventeen. Let's go eighteen an hour. What a laugh that is. Woo! Let's go up to twenty-five dollars an hour. Make it something real. $15 an hour is sustenance, wages. But would supporters change their minds if drastic wage hikes resulted in some nasty unintended consequences, both for the poor and for others? Honestly, the minimum wage is going to raise and then everything around it is going to raise, so I don't really know if it makes too much of a difference. And so what, what do you think the level of minimum wage should be? I don't know. <laughs> She's in good company. A majority of economists agree that minimum wage hikes cause some increase in unemployment, but the exact outcomes of a particular hike could vary wildly from one local economy to the next, and the results are difficult, if not impossible, to determine. Even as he was signing the new $15 minimum wage into law recently, California Governor Jerry Brown still seemed a little ambivalent. Economically, uh, minimum wages may not make sense, but morally, and socially and politically, they make every sense because it binds the community together. I don't know what makes economic sense. I, do, I, I, don't, know, um, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I think that it will be a big, a big adjustment, but people will survive like they always do. And so do you think that there's a possibility if you raise it too high that people like in you know, summer jobs or for kids or just intra-level positions that they might have a tougher time getting a job? Uh, they probably will because then they'll be, I guess, uh, supervisors or hiring managers will start looking more at experience or education because they're paying a little bit more. There's evidence that young, inexperienced workers are some of the hardest hit by minimum wage hikes. New Zealand acted as a sort of natural experiment. When the government stopped allowing lower wages for younger, part-time workers, youth unemployment skyrocketed while the rate held steady among older workers. A similar spike in unemployment happened when England raised the minimum wage for young workers. And it's not just the young. The people most likely to lose job prospects or hours are the very people the minimum wage is supposed to help. A 2014 Congressional Budget Office report estimated that an increase in the federal minimum wage from its current $7.25 an hour to $10.10 an hour would lead to the loss of a half a million jobs, mostly among America's poorest workers. And most economic analyses find no connection between a higher minimum wage and reductions in poverty. Progress causes pain sometimes, I guess, and if it costs a few jobs, that'd be fine. Overall, I think it would be good, though. We need to do it. Do you think at the end of the day that it would be better for, let's say, lower-income people or in entry-level jobs to raise the wage, even if they might, some of them might lose their jobs or have fewer hours? I think overall it would be a better thing. So if people lose their jobs, would you still like to see the minimum wage doubled? Mm. No, not really. I mean, then there'd just be more unemployment, right? And then so it all it kind of doesn't work out that way either. Silver Lake is a part of LA known for its quirky local businesses and its coffee shops, the kind of place where people are willing to pay a premium to avoid products deemed overly corporate. So where, where is that from? Uh, this is from Intelligentsia Cafe. Oh. What's that? It is a coffee shop. Right here, local? Right here, local. Why do you like it? Because it's great quality, um, it's local. I've been coming here since the day they opened. Is it expensive? How much was that? Uh, for most people, they would consider this expensive. It was nine fifty for a cup of tea, a cup of coffee. Can I ask, what's the most you've ever spent on a shirt? On a shirt? Oh my god! Let's just say more than two hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to say much. Let's say that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But these kinds of local businesses are exactly the types of places minimum wage critics argue are often hurt most because they don't have a corporate parent to lean on. Say like Pollo Loco is a corporation, everything is turning corporate. Do you think increasing the minimum wage could accelerate that, turning corporate, if they're the only ones that can take that hit? It seems logically speaking that would be the case. Do you think that there would be any issues with, uh, you know, businesses closing as a result? Uh, yeah, definitely. 
right here was Casbah Cafe, but that just closed. Rent is just going, is getting too high for all these places to survive. If the trade-off is that, you know, some smaller places that can absorb that money that they would have to close, do you think that that's worth it? That's a shame, but I feel like maybe there could be like um, a government loan or a subsidy or something that could help. There are at least two options on our survey that nobody chose, $100 and zero. But why not abolish the minimum wage altogether? What do you think would happen if there were no minimum wage? People, people would, uh, there would be slave labor because people are uh, monsters. Why not get rid of the minimum wage? Uh, because then I think bosses might lower, you know, what they give as a minimum. They would have uh, people working for nothing if they could. Would abolition of the minimum wage really lead to slave labor in Silver Lake? And could there be legitimate arrangements where people work for little or no money because it gives them the chance to gain valuable experience or make important professional contacts? After all, people pay thousands of dollars to work state-sanctioned, university-sponsored internships. And many may prefer to work in a small bookstore or nonprofit over a fast food job, even if they earn less. So how are people who lack the time, money, and, dare we say, privilege to attend college supposed to get a foothold in a job market that more or less outlaws internships, apprenticeships, volunteering, and other customizable arrangements that simply aren't worth $15 an hour to any employer? People will work if they're desperate to work. I'd work for less if I had to in a pinch. Some say I have. Those people, they shouldn't be allowed to say, yeah, I'll work for three bucks an hour. I mean, they can on the low, but not legally, no. Not like a regular business, but uh, yeah, if you want to give me uh, five bucks to run an errand for you, I might do it. <laughs> yeah, you want to buy me coffee right now, I'm taking it. In fact, please do. <laughs>